What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you five games that I play for nostalgia's sake or when I'm feeling nostalgic, which is a topic that has been on my mind because having just recently turned 30 within the past month here, combined with my son starting school this fall, has me thinking about how my life has evolved and changed, where it's going next, where it's been, the usual stuff. Though in keeping with the theme of the channel, which is and will always be video games, I thought it would be fun to do something a little different and talk about games that I love to play when I'm thinking about certain periods in my life and share some of that context with you. If you've watched the channel a long time, some of this you'll know, some of this you won't, but regardless, let's dive into it and talk about it. To get the very obvious one out of the way, we have Diablo 2. This is a game I have played to death, and while I don't have any set-in-stone timers to give you, I would venture a guess that I've played Diablo 2 probably more than I've played any game game period. And Diablo 2, of course, being the sequel to Diablo, which put ARPGs on the map and ultimately became this huge genre that we are still seeing clones of and iterations of to this very day, means that I don't really have to explain too much about it here. But Diablo 2, for me, was a bit of a comfort game in a very rough time in my life, as my biological father had just been sent to prison, which put me in the care of my biological mother, who was never the most stable person, which ultimately wound up with me being homeless a few years after this, but at this point in time, from about 12 until I was almost 14, one of the very few games I had access to was Diablo 2, which ran on this incredibly old computer even for the time, but nonetheless allowed me to play that game religiously, and because of my situation at the time and the fact that no one was really paying that much attention to me, I was on a bit of a third shift schedule, as it were. I would stay up all night, go to school, come home, go to sleep, wake up at like 8 or 9 in the afternoon, stay up all night playing Diablo 2, and this went on for, again, like a year. It was a very substantial amount of time, and I did this because it just kind of allowed me to have an outlet of sorts while also being able to avoid people, which at the time I wasn't really comfortable with, which means that to this day, Diablo 2 is very much so a comfort game with me, which is helped in no small part by the fact that it has an offline mode, which means that the version I have installed on my computer today is something that I can continue to play, which is something that can't be said for Diablo 4. So, of course, Diablo 2 has a special place with me, but then we have Oblivion. The Elder Scrolls Oblivion is both my first Elder Scrolls game, as well as one of the only birthday gifts I ever really received as a kid. And receiving that was probably one of the last, I would say, positive interactions with my biological mother before that relationship fell apart, which is when I wound up homeless. But during this time, which was from when I was about 15 to 17, I would either stay the night at various friends' houses or just sleep in abandoned houses. But a friend of mine had a laptop that they didn't need anymore that they then gave to me, which is what I used to play Oblivion. And Oblivion provided this big open world with tons of in-depth lore that you could really sort of immerse yourself in. And as such, Oblivion is one of those games that I'm incredibly fond of, despite the way it looks these days on top of its janky systems, the scaling on enemies is especially bad. How your own character levels up is also incredibly abstract in some cases. But because Oblivion and the Elder Scrolls have just this immense wealth of lore and things to learn and things to try, especially when it comes to actually playing that game, it gave me the opportunity to think about something else besides my situation, which at that time in my life was pretty rare, between going to school and also trying to figure out where I was going to stay next, etc., etc. So in many ways, I thank Oblivion for providing me the opportunity to just be a teenager at times when the world was really demanding that I be an adult, which makes it another game that I have a lot of personal memories attached to which really drives home the nostalgia. Third on the list, though, we have Baldur's Gate 1. Like many people, I'm very fond of this title. It is of the Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 entries, my favorite. I guess we'll see how 3 wraps up here in just a couple months. 
This entry being a little less heavy, mind you. But I first played Baldur's Gate when I was like 10 or 11, and it was my first introduction to Dungeons and Dragons. And at that time, I didn't really understand the rules as advanced Dungeons and Dragons was a bit arcane in nature, which means that I didn't wind up beating this title for the first time until I was in high school, which was a few years later. But nonetheless, Baldur's Gate 1 being based off of a tabletop role-playing game sort of sparked my interest in those games and what they could be, what they could provide, which is when I started learning about Dungeons and Dragons. And at the same time I was homeless with Oblivion, I was also occasionally playing Baldur's Gate while I would sometimes go to a sort of comic book and board game style store where they'd let people play D&D in the back, which is where I would sometimes play things like D&D and Pathfinder, of course, which gave me something to do after school at the time. But ultimately, Baldur's Gate 1 was my first sort of foray into that world, and and I'm really thankful for it, as I love the setting very much. And while the rules of D&D 5e aren't exactly for me, the Forgotten Realm setting, as well as just the earlier editions of D&D 3.5 in particular, are tied to some very fond memories for me, which I can thank AD&D and Baldur's Gate 1 for getting me into. That does bring us to number 4 on the list though, and this is actually Fable 1. Of the Fable games, 1, 2, and 3, there are no others, and I refuse to acknowledge any arguments to the contrary, but Fable 1 is my favorite of the Fable games. 2 and 3 I feel like never really capitalized on the fantasy of being a hero in Albion and everything that that stood for in the first game, but in Fable 1, our parents are brutally murdered in a bandit raid, or more specifically our father is, and we can decide whether or not to turn that into something positive and use our life for something good or go full evil as a result, whatever floats your boat. And there's a lot of moral decisions introduced in a somewhat comical way, to be sure, that I found really endearing. And combined with the fact that Fable 1 is one of the first games that was ever given to me that wasn't something for a handheld or didn't have to borrow, etc., had me really excited, and I remember actually just reading the back of the box over and over again, thinking about all the ways I would try to build this character and be a hero in this foreign land, which for a preteen, which I was at the time, was a really exciting prospect, because if you couldn't tell, a lot of that period of my life was sort of dominated by negative events, and I spent a lot of time in video games as a form of escapism, really. But Fable really had this humor to it that combined with, I think, just the better game that Fable 1 was compared to the other two makes it stick out in my memory to this day. That does bring us to our final entry, and believe it or not, this is Dragon Age Inquisition, definitely the latest release of all these titles, with this one being from back in 2014. You see, Dragon Age Inquisition released when I was a young adult in my early 20s, and I had just gotten on my feet properly for the first time in my entire life, actually. I had just gotten out of the military, I was working a stable job on third shift, actually, which I did for many years, before moving on to salaried jobs, etc., etc. But Dragon Age Inquisition reminds me of that time in my life when I finally felt like I could really push or try to do anything I set my mind to. Which is no small coincidence, then, that this channel was made at the end of 2015. But Dragon Age Inquisition was actually the first Dragon Age game I'd ever played. I just remembered it was a big game release at the time that I heard people talking about, and I was like, man, that sounds really cool. I'd like to jump in and play it, so, you know, I did. And I was really blown away by the lore. And it took quite a few years still for me to go play the other two. And while they're certainly varied experiences, I think the lore remains the standout of the entire Dragon Age series. But Inquisition in particular, despite not exactly being, let's say, universally praised, does remind me of that time in my life where it kind of felt like everything was finally coming together for me. And combined with the very cool world of Dragon Age, makes for a game that I still like to jump into every once in a while and remember that time in my life. But I think that is where we are going to call it today. There are five games that I play when I'm feeling particularly nostalgic and remind me of where I've been and where I'd like to go from here. But that is all I've got for you guys today. I'd certainly love to hear about any games that helped you through a rough time, games that remind you of certain times in your life, that kind of thing. Which, of course, means to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day. Mm -hmm.